Obesity is a condition that greatly increases a person's risk for severe illness with COVID-19. If you're wondering why that is, stick around. Hi, I'm Dr. Morali, internal medicine doctor and obesity medicine specialist, and this is Dr. Morali Weighs In, where I weigh in on topics related to weight management, drawing from my own personal struggle with weight, as well as my professional experience as an obesity medicine physician. Today, I'm weighing in on the relationship between COVID-19 and obesity. As cases surge in the United States, I get a lot of questions from my patients asking me why obesity is considered a high risk condition for severe illness with COVID-19. Many conditions closely linked with obesity like diabetes, heart disease, kidney failure, and others are also considered high risk conditions for severe illness. This begs the question, what is the link between COVID-19 and obesity and obesity related illnesses? To answer this, we really need to know a little bit more about COVID-19. You may have heard that COVID-19 enters cells using a spike protein that projects out of its viral capsule. The spike protein then binds to an enzyme that's embedded in the membrane of our cells that's located in our nasal passages, in our lungs, in our heart, in our intestinal tract, in our kidneys, as well as in our blood vessels. This is likely why patients experience a loss of smell, shortness of breath or cough, chest pain, kidney failure, diarrhea, as well as blood clots. When the spike protein binds to the ACE2 enzyme, it acts like a key unlocking a door into the cell. The virus is now able to enter the cell and hijack the cell's machinery in order to replicate itself hundreds if not thousands of times. It then bursts out of the cell and then infects other cells nearby or it can infect other people. COVID-19 does another thing after it enters the cell. It commands it to remove the door it used to enter the cell, the ACE2 enzyme. This is important because the function of ACE2 is to break down a signaling protein known as angiotensin II or AG2. Normally, AG2 is a signal to the body to ramp up its fight or flight response. The fight or flight response is a protective response. If we are running away from a predator and we get injured, we break our leg or we get an open wound, we are gonna have potential for infection and blood loss. And so the fight or flight response basically helps us constrict our blood vessels so that we can limit our bleeding. It increases clotting factors so that we can clot our blood and, and also prevent significant blood loss. Also, if there's anything infectious, any bacteria or fungus or virus that gets into our wounds, our inflammatory response is our body's first line of defense against foreign invaders. So this is a normal response to injury in the human body. Since COVID-19 disables the ACE2 enzyme, which normally holds this fight or flight signal, the AG2 protein in check, AG2 levels can now rise to a dangerously high level, contributing to an uncontrollable inflammatory response known as cytokine storm, as well as constricting blood flow by constricting blood vessels and promoting clotting throughout the body. This can cause multi-organ failure and even death, which is what we see when patients are severely ill with COVID-19. Recent studies have even shown higher levels of AG2 in ICU patients with COVID compared to ICU patients who do not have COVID-19 illness. Scientists are actually experimenting with drugs that mimic the ACE2 function to help lower the AG2 levels or even block AG2 receptors in order to treat patients who have severe illness with COVID-19 and they're finding some preliminary positive results. So how does all this relate to obesity? You may have noticed that obesity doesn't affect everybody's health in exactly the same way. You might know people who are 40 or 50 pounds overweight, 
but they don't have health problems that we normally think are related to obesity, like prediabetes or diabetes or high blood pressure or heart disease. On the other hand, you may know someone who is closer to their normal weight or maybe just a little bit overweight, and they do have problems like prediabetes and diabetes, high blood pressure, etc. The reason for this is the amount of fat that we carry in our bodies is not as important as where we carry that fat. There are two places where we can categorize fat storage in the human body. One is subcutaneous fat and the other is visceral fat. Subcutaneous fat basically means fat that is stored directly under the skin. This is fat that we can see and feel. This is the fat that everybody wants to get rid of. However, even though it might affect our mobility or we don't like the way it looks, it doesn't really cause health problems as much, especially if it is focused in the arms or thighs or hips and those areas, people who are what we call pear-shaped, that kind of fat distribution is generally not that dangerous. Visceral fat, on the other hand, is fat that is stored deep inside our bodies. This is fat that is in and around our internal organs or even around our blood vessels. And visceral fat is linked to significant health problems like diabetes, prediabetes, blood pressure, heart disease, kidney failure, fatty liver, and others. Generally speaking, people with more visceral fat are also people who tend to store fat around their waist. Fat storage patterns can differ based on gender, with men generally having more visceral fat than women, but it also can be genetically determined. But even among people who mainly store fat in the subcutaneous fat cells, if they continue to gain weight and continue to increase the amount of fat stored in their body, those subcutaneous fat cells can start to fill up and then they start storing more of their fat deep inside in that visceral fat. One of the ways that visceral fat is harmful is that it can reduce levels of a hormone called adiponectin that is released by fat cells. Adiponectin is an anti-inflammatory hormone and like the ACE2 enzyme, it lowers the pro-inflammatory signaling protein AG2. So when people have more visceral fat, they have lower amounts of that adiponectin and they can have higher levels of AG2. When AG2 is high, it promotes this chronic, low-grade smoldering inflammatory state, which is one of the causes of prediabetes, diabetes, high blood pressure, heart disease, kidney failure, fatty liver, and a lot of those obesity-related medical conditions. And right there is the link. People who are older, men, people who have diabetes, people who have heart disease and kidney disease, as well as people who carry higher amounts of weight are also likely to have higher amounts of visceral fat. So with higher amounts of visceral fat, these individuals also have this higher level of AG2, this chronic low level inflammatory state. And if they get COVID-19, it's like throwing gasoline on a smoldering fire. Basically taking this chronic inflammatory state that would cause damage to internal organs over a period of years and accelerating all of that to happen within a few days. So how many people might be affected by this? Well, if we assume that prediabetes and diabetes are good markers of visceral fat because those two things are very closely linked, about 50% of Americans have prediabetes or diabetes. So that means that at least 50% of the adult population in the United States has a significant amount of visceral fat and this chronic low level inflammatory state. So given how common this is and the potential for people who have this condition to develop severe illness with COVID-19, that really underscores and underlines the importance of trying to limit the spread of coronavirus in our communities. Vulnerable people in our towns and cities, as well as my colleagues who are out there on the front lines, in the ERs, in the hospitals, really need all of us to make the right decision and wear masks and practice social distancing 
in order to really try to get this under control. The good news is that behaviors that normally help us lose fat, like sleeping well, physical activity, reducing our calorie intake, all of these things will work on subcutaneous fat and visceral fat. Even better news is that just a 5% reduction in our weight can result in a 30% reduction in visceral fat. So please don't give up on managing your weight because you can't go to the gym or you're stressed out to the max due to COVID-19. Through this channel, even though we are separate, my hope is that we can come together in a unique and creative way and help each other as we take on this challenge. So that about wraps it up for this video. As always, thank you all for your support. If you like the content, please do like and subscribe and thank you. Mm -hmm.